Brand new in Google Sheets, the ability to have a multi-select drop-down list. So you can actually select two of them from a list. And in this video, I'm going to cover how to build that, which was not too difficult, but then also how do you do analysis with it, like create this pivot table or add some filters depending on one item. So my name is David Lam, and I have tons of videos on this stuff. So let's get started. So going into the exercise sheet, I have made this list of my items and in the item column, I'm going to select it and I'm going to go to insert. I'm going to choose drop-down. I will open up the data validation menu. This is brand new, allow multiple selections. If I click on this, it will allow you to see it like that. By the way, I always recommend doing a drop-down for a range rather than the built-in one. And if you pre-select some data, leave some gaps at the end so you can leave and add some later on, and then click it like that. Now, usually I don't like these chip things, so I like to do the arrows like this, but if you are going to have multi-select click on chip and this thing, allow multiple selections. You can't have that with the others. So if I untick this and go to arrow, this one grays out. So we're going to do allow multiple selections. You can see that the chips are now only covering the parts of it, press done. And that's pretty much it. It's actually pretty easy to do. If you want a little bit more flexibility, this has been in drop down for a while, but you can color code them. So engine might be something that color, mirror might be like gray, tires are say blue and wheel could be yellow like that. And now it will give you a visual indication of when you're picking them as well. And you can multi-select. That's pretty much it. But off the bat, it is very limited. So for example, if I try to add filters and I'm going to click here and choose filter, what would you expect here? You would expect to see them together, which is what you get. But if you just want to know, well, who are the people who have picked wheels, regardless of whether they've picked wheel on its own or something else, you have to select all of them. Now you could, if you wanted to just type in the search like this and then select all the selected ones, but it does take a little bit more time. By the way, if you want to reorder them, so if I want, for example, wheel to be at the end, what I need to do is untick wheel and then retick wheel as well. So that'll get it showing like that. And you can have as many as you want. There's no way to allow a limit. And also you can't do analysis. So I love using pivot tables to say, analysis and I want to know how many times has wheel been chosen and it's not going to be doable because with a pivot table or with a summit function it's just going to show me all of these together now interestingly if I do equals to this cell what does it show me it shows me a comma separated list this is something Google Sheets does it suggests it and it shows me a comma separated list like this so that means that we can split it into multiple columns I'm going to insert two columns and I'm going to say equals split. I love the split function. You click on that and then you do delimiter. So if you do, for example, comma and then space, then it will split it like this. A couple of things to note, you do need the comma and space because it does do a comma and space there. If you do it without, then it would do a space, a leading space at the beginning, which is not what you want. So. I could actually change H5 to be E5. So if this was E5, then it would still work exactly the same way. And I actually wouldn't need this because this is essentially stored as a comma separated list with comma and then space between each items. Now, how do I avoid these value errors? Well, I need to go in the formula and I need to do if error. So equals if error. And if error will do absolutely nothing unless there's an error, in which case it will replace it with something else, but it is a square option thing. So if you leave it blank, it will just replace it with a blank, which is usually what you want anyway. By the way, in Excel, an if error must have something in the value of error. I really like that in Google Sheets, you don't have to have it, which is great. So now it's split it out like this over three different columns. And now in theory, I could do something like item one, item two, item three. This doesn't really solve the filter thing as much. One thing that I could do is search for whether it contains something. So I could say has mirror. This will give me a search column for this equals if doesn't work with contain. So you actually need another thing called search tab and search for, I'm going to say in speech marks mirror and then text to search will be in here. And then I close my brackets and it has a number or it will have an error. 
So here it has it. And this one, if I switch to mirror, even if I choose something else and click out, help. There you go. Now it will have it there. One means the character where it starts. So this is the eighth character because of that. Now, if I want to convert this into something that I can filter by, I'm going to put before search, I'm going to put is error. So is error will return true if there's an error and false if there isn't. Just go one input, which is value, and then it will be false. And if I drag that down, it will show me trues and falses. But actually, where it's mirror, it's showing me false rather than true. So has mirror, this is the inverse of it. So if you want to negate that, you have the not function. Not one that I use very often, but not will convert the trues into falses and the falses into trues. Drag that down like that. And now mirror, true, et cetera, et cetera. So now if I add my filters, I can filter for has mirror. False, these are the ones without mirror, as you can see. So here we have data, the same kind of data, and I'm going to make this into a table. I absolutely love tables in Google Sheets. They're pretty new as well, but they provide you with a lot of things that you can do with it. So for example, if you add in a new row, then all the formulas, everything comes down. You can add in a new row in between as well. And everything, including formulas, get auto-calculated for that row. Really, really handy and nice. Works really well with formulas, auto-expands, and things like that. So for data validation, what you can do is you can click in this one, and you can edit the column type, and you have drop-down. I have a whole other video where I talk all about tables in Google Sheets and how much I love them that I'll put a link to. But for now, let's look at this. So in criteria, we're going to do drop down for a range. Notice you have this one, allow multiple selections. I'm going to choose the range to be this one and press OK. And here I'm going to say allow multiple selections and press done. All right, so that's kind of put it there. Now, the beauty of having it linked to this is it that it does auto expand. So if I do radio over there, I now see it over here automatically. Now, if I want to edit it, I can go here and choose drop down again, and that will open this. I can also do the color coding thing, for example, if I want to. All good stuff that you can access. The darker themed ones, I don't really like them because they do stand out a little bit too much after I press done. There we go. So it's a very, very heavy color selection. Great. So that's how you can add them inside tables. And I have another video, as I said, where I talk about tables. So for the next part of this, I'm going to show you how to create this table, which takes a sequence of formulas. It's not for the faint-hearted, but it does allow you with complete analysis needs that you might want to have for filters and for pivot tables and some ifs, etc. So I would say that if you're kind of happy with just being able to select it and you don't want to know all the in-depth details about how to do the analysis, then you can stop watching now. But I am going to go through how to do this because for me, it is super important to be able to go from this to this and have it automated. So let's first learn flatten. So equals flatten. And I'm going to say, for example, these three columns. Those are my brackets. You'll see what it does. It lists out first this one, then going right, and then from left to right, all of them all in one column. Now, not that interesting, but where it becomes interesting if is if I add something else. So equals flatten, and I choose this not including the header. And then I do ampersand speech marks, pipe, speech marks, ampersand. That vertical line is called a pipe. And then I'm going to choose this one. I'm going to choose ampersand, speech marks, pipe, speech marks, ampersand. And then I'm going to choose this. We're not going to do the date one yet, but we'll add that in a little bit. Enter, and we get a value error because it says I need array formula. So I'm going to write equals array formula tab at the beginning, close my brackets at the end, and now it will show me like this. If you ever get errors with a formula that you expect to populate into multiple cells, then just wrap it inside array formula. This is a Google Sheets thing. Excel would work without it. But here we go. Here we have this pipe symbol in the middle. Now we can split it by using something we already learned, equals split, and then comma, Delimiter is going to be speech marks, pipe speech marks. Close my brackets and I get that. But actually, I'm going to put my array formula before the split because I don't need it there anymore. And this is only one close brackets. This is a second close bracket. There we go. And now we have it like this. 
Now, I know it's not perfect because we still need our headers, but bear that in mind. We'll come back to that later on. So I'm going to now do and, and then I'm going to say speech marks, type speech marks, and, and now I'm going to include the dates and another and, and this should give me the dates like that. I'm going to introduce you to another function that you need to get the dates to format nicely. There's before array formula, I'm going to write query. And the query function takes the data, and then you can use SQL like code to do certain things with the data that we'll use a couple of times here. I'm going to do comma and then always start with double quotes and say select star, i.e., select all the data, format, and I'm going to say call to the second column. I'm going to say single quotes dd space mmm space yy. Close single quotes, close double quotes, and then close your brackets. And now it will show it to me like this. By the way, I always advocate formatting dates like this because that way, whether you're in US or UK, you know that this is 6th of August and it's not 8th of June. If you took 1D, then it even looks a bit nicer as well. All right. So that's all very good. Let's take what we've learned from this into our broader exercise and we'll get the headers out later on. So first what I'm going to do is insert onto the left because this is my actual table and I'm actually going to make this into a table. So format invert to table and there we go. This is going to be table name of auto data. All right, so I'm going to do equals array formula first and then split, and then I'm going to do flatten. And I'm going to select this column and I'm going to press ampersand, double quotes, pipe, double quotes, ampersand. And I'm going to take this, these characters, and I'm going to copy them because we're going to use them again a bunch. And I'm going to click on this column, control V, this one, keep pasting it. And then I have to actually go to these later columns first before we're going to split this one out. And then I'm going to close my brackets for flatten. We'll get the rest out later on. Comma for split. Well, let's see what happens if I do a nonsense character. Close for array formula. It's just going to give me kind of like this. So I need to do a split between the pipe symbol. Perfect. Then what I need to do is do it as well with this one. And the item column is going to show up at the end. So I'm going to do in here, after the final column, I'm going to press, compress Alt Enter to go to a new row. That might be easier for you to follow in this video. I'm going to do Control V again, and I'm going to do split. And this column, I'm going to split. I'm going to split this one by comma, Split by each is going to be comma, space, close brackets. So here, comma is not to switch between the next input and the formula. This is actually the delimiter. I'll show you why. I did show this to you earlier in the video, but I'll show it to you in case you forget it. No, nope. uh, it's going to give me an error. I think I need to close my brackets here and not here. There we go. Yeah. So uh, just to show you, if I was to do equals this cell, it would just show them to me as a comma separate to the list. So what we'd said was we use an if arrow with split with this delimiter to split them. All right, so looking at our data, we have it more or less right. We don't have the headers, we need that. We need this to format as an actual date. And we need this one, most importantly, to not include the blanks. What it does is if there is a maximum of four things, then it will do four things for every single row. So you can see James is four, Darren is four, etc. So it's kind of unpivoted, but given all these rows where the rest are blanks. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the query function before it. So I'm going to press Alt Enter again. And here I'm going to write equals query. And then this is going to be my data. I'm going to press a comma to go to the what the query is. Alt Enter again. And here I'm going to say Always start with double quotes, select, let's get rid of this, select star where then I'm going to say call one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Call seven is not null. And then let's quote, close my double quotes, close my bracket for 
that one and you can see that it's filtered out everything else. Now I'm gonna go back in and add the format. So after the not null, I'm gonna press space, format, call five, there's one, two, three, four, five, and also I know because I've recorded many takes of this video. <laughs> format call five, and then single quotes D space M M M space Y Y. That's why I said was my favorite one. Close your single quotes, then remember to close your double quotes and close your brackets. And now we have it showing like this. Last thing that we needed the headers. I wish it was a little bit easier than it is, but um, let's look at VStack. VStack's a fun one to learn anyway. And what VStack does is it just stacks two tables V for vertically on top of each other. So equals VStack. And I have range one, comma, range two. The others are optional. So I'm going to start with this one, include the headers. Um, I'm going to press comma and just do the data, not including the headers. And I'm going to close my brackets and it just puts one on top of each other. Really, really easy. Because this upper one is a table, if I add in a new row, for example, Liam with some data, Liam gets added here. But if I add in something here, new, this doesn't get added here. Now, if I did equals V stack the other way, then I'm going to select all of this. Note that when you select the whole table, it changes what it's called. You would have seen that as well with a column because this is a new functionality like that. And then if I select all of this one, it will just be dynamic for the table, but not for everything else. Use tables wherever, they're absolutely brilliant. Now, um, hstack does the horizontal version of it, so equals hstack. I often use this to stack and reorder columns, essentially. So if I do an hstack, I could select these ones, and then I can press a comma, and then I could select this one, and then a comma, and this one, comma, and this one. And it will just kind of reorder them as the name implies, like that. The name engine... And then instead of tire, it goes wheel and then tire and then date. So we're going to use a combination of these two in something that I wish was a little bit simpler, but this is the way that I figured out how to do it. So before query, I'm going to write equals, well, alt enter, let's give you a new line. So V stack, and then I'm going to do H stack. <laughs> so H stack, I'm going to do the columns in the same order, which is going to be these ones comma, and then I'm going to do these two, comma, and then I'm going to do this one. Close my brackets for hstack, because I'm going to reorder the columns, and then I just press a comma to tell Excel slash Google Sheets to first put all of the headers and then append that to the rest of the data. I need to close my brackets at the end of vstack, press enter, and now I have my headers in the right place name units, price, income, etc. Note that if you would have just done a straight V stack, I'm going to cut this. If I would have just done a straight V stack of these headers, I don't need the column one, that is something I did later on, then it does it in the wrong order. So this is the item column, this is the date, this is the code. So I need it in that way. So I just quickly did the formula that would happen if I kept the columns in the exact same order. And what you'll see is that this happens. So if there is nothing else set, it actually offsets it this way. So it ends up not really working for the filters in the same way. And, you know, this is the code and it's not really in the right column anymore. So definitely do it that way with the multi-select being the last column that you do. And as long as you do it correctly in that way, then this is your master table. This is your dream table. You cannot make this into a table. If you convert to table, it tells you it can't because formulas are not supported in the area row. But what you can do is you can insert a pivot table. And let's do this in an existing worksheet over here. And now I can do exactly what I want to. So I can take the item in values and I can take the item in rows. And I can see how many there are of each one, five, five, six, four, etc. And I can also copy this and let's paste it up here so we can see it next to our data. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to change item into name. And now it tells me this. I'm going to say I just want to know the unique count of it. So Darren has three items. Let's see. So he has wheel. He has engine. He has wheel again. So that's not unique. He has mirror. And let's say that his engine becomes a mirror as well. Now he's gonna go down to two. It's next to this data in the green table, but actually the pivot table comes from down here, the table that we made. And you can add filters here to your heart's desire as well. 
as you might expect. I hope you enjoyed that video. My name is David Benaiman. I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering my channel.